Let's get straight into it. We're doing data handling, we do the calculations. All right, so we need some data to work with first. Um, Chiamo, please put in chat there what your mark is. If you're excited to tell us, we'd love to see. All right, we got some data there. I just want to zoom in a little bit more and try and get you guys to see all the data. But let's read the contextual text above here. It says Stats South Africa collects and releases data based on passenger transport annually. Table two below shows the 2016 data for land passenger transportation. Okay, so this is 2016 data for land passenger transportation. We've got land transport in terms of uh, rail and road and under each, and then we've got a total land. So we're obviously adding those two up. Then we've got passengers, journeys in thousands. So how many passengers are, are journeying in thousands, which is a pretty big number. So if we've got this number here, 30,526, just remember that's in thousands, okay? so it's 30,526 plus zero, zero, zero. So that's actually 30 million, 30.5 million, okay? Then the income from rail is in millions. So that's 238 million, 238 million. Just remember that when we read this uh, table. All right, we have the number of passengers and the income for, for rail and road, and then a total at the end of the table. And this is for a year for, from January to December. You can see on the left-hand side there, we got months. All right, so there's the data in the table. This is what we're gonna work with tonight. We also have totals at the bottom that you can see they've added up all the totals for the 12 months at the bottom of each column. All right, let's see, let's see, let's see. Now, what I'm gonna do is actually I'm gonna shrink the data a little bit because it's gonna be, I'm gonna have to, move up and down to see the data as we go here. So first question, write down the month with the highest income for rail transportation. So you guys can put it in chat or you can unmute if you want. Write down the month for the highest income for rail transportation. Transpiration, that's what plants do, transportation. Write down the month for the highest income in rail. The month with the highest income in rail. Just write it down, no calculations needed. You just have to say it. What is the month with the highest income for rail? Okay, we've got an answer for September. September, September, September. Okay, so everyone's saying 275, 275 million. I agree with you because I don't see a number bigger than that in that column. So September must be the highest. That's the highest income for rail in terms of rands. Yes, well done. Okay, so we're gonna say September and we'll take our two marks. Thank you very much, money in the bank. All right, moving on to question two. Write down, again, no calculation, write down the total number of land passenger journeys for December. Write down the total number of land passenger journeys for December. Careful now. I want you to write that number down. What is the number of total passenger journeys for December? Total passenger journeys for December. You got to check out the number and then write it down. Write down the, the highest, write down the total number of passenger journeys for December. The total number of passenger journeys for December. Total pass, number of passenger journeys for December. It, uh, you write that number is correct. Just remember that these numbers for journeys are in thousands. Okay, so you've got to add on a couple of zeros there. All right, yeah, don't forget to add on, don't stress. VUA, don't stress. Don't forget to add on the zeros, guys. These numbers are in thousands. So every number that you see there must have three zeros on it. Okay, yes. So you guys are seeing the right number. It's this one down here. All right. The total for December, not rail or road. It's the total. There it is there. So we have to write four, five, 
9050000 at the end because these numbers are in thousands. So you have to write 000 uh, at the end. Okay. If they said the number was in millions, you'd add six zeros. If the number was in thousands, you add three zeros. If the number's in hundreds, you add two zeros. If the number's in tens, you add one zero. Okay. All right. So let's take this value. This is the one we want. It's 45,905,000 passengers. All right. So I'm going to put that down here for this question. And I'll write their passengers. Write down the total number of passengers. It's that many passengers. All right. Next question. Calculate the road transportation income for April as a percentage of the total land income. Calculate the road transportation income, road transportation income for April as a percentage of total land income. So it's road transportation for April as a percentage of total land income. So we're going to look for April road for April and then the total. All right. The road for April is April. These are the numbers we need to look at. And we're looking at the income for road. All right. Which is this one. Remember, that's in thousands, uh, millions. And we want that percentage of the total. All right, I'll give you guys a couple of minutes. I need the road income for April as a percentage of the total land income for April. All right, so I need those two numbers in a percentage calculation, please. And you can tell me what the percentage is. I need the road income in highlighted in green as a percentage of the total income for April highlighted in blue as a percentage. All right, we've got a percentage out there. You guys do yours. You give me a thumbs up or you can type your answer in. And then I know that you finished. Okay. Please check your answers. Don't worry about what's coming up in chat. You do yours. You make sure you do yours. And you need to check your answer. All right. Good. Answers are coming in. Okay. You make sure that you do yours right. Okay. I'm going to start a chair on the screen, but you carry on and make sure that yours is right. So it's 743 million. Over 981 million times 100 to get the percentage. All right. So 743 over 981. Times by 100. Okay, seven five comma seven three nine oh four seven five comma seven three nine oh four. There are other decimals. I'm gonna leave it at the fifth one, a percent, and then we need to round this off to seventy five comma seven four. Second decimal place. We're looking at the second decimal, which is a three, and the nine will change it to a four. Well done. Good job. Good job. If there are any questions about what we're doing, please remember to ask. All right, all good so far? Let me know if we're good, otherwise we're gonna carry on. Okay, so that is the calculation we need to do. We need to make a percentage, we need a fraction. The one that's of is always at the bottom, and we know we have to times by 100%. All right, I'm gonna put that, answer down here. That was for three marks. Okay, there we go. So calculate the road transport income for April as a percentage of the total land income. Now, <clears throat> some people might 
argue with me and say, sir, this yellow part that's highlighted says April, and the blue one doesn't say a month. It doesn't say for April. So some people actually might argue with me and say, sir, should we not use the total income at the bottom of the table? Yeah, there could be a possibility, all right? Because they don't say, calculate the road transport income for April as a percentage of the total land income for April. They don't say that. So maybe they mean this green one with the blue one at the bottom here. What do you guys think? Do you think they mean April or do you think they mean the total at the bottom? Hmm? What do you guys think? Which blue number do you think they're wanting? April, or I think I would, I think they would mean April as well. But some people might argue that it's the total at the bottom there because they don't mention April for the total. They just say the total. Hmm. Just shows you you got to be very specific with your questions. All right. The total land income. So the total land income. Hmm. I'm actually thinking it might even be this bottom one. What do you guys think? Uh, you say April. All right, we'll leave it as April, but I think there might be an argument to say total land income. When they say total land income, are they not meaning this total land income at the bottom here? Hmm. Yeah, there is a total at the end here. So maybe that's what they mean by total, but they don't say April. Anyway, I think the markers would have to argue that point and say, well, what does the question really mean? But the markers at the marking uh, centers will have to argue that point. Mm, I think they would have to. I think they would have to accept both because they're both totals. But how do you refer to the bottom number specifically, the grand total? Because this top column says total, right? This says total land. And that's this is the total land income, but this is specifically the total land income for April. The total total or the grand total income is right down at the bottom. So they should be more specific with that. I think they should have been a lot more specific. The grand total, maybe. Anyway, let's move on to the next question. Ah, here we go. Finally, calculate the mean monthly income for rail. Woo we guys, this might take a while. Calculate the mean monthly income for rail. All right. So rail income is all those. All right. You need to calculate the mean. What's another word for the mean? You can type it in chat. What is another word for the mean? For those people that might be confused about mean, median, mode, which one is which, what's another word for the mean? Yes, the, the average. Calculate the average. Calculate the average income for rail, which means we've got to do all 12 in our average calculation. Yes. Now, when you write this in the exam, please do not write all 12. That don't say 238 million plus, 266 million plus, 254. Don't write that down. Just do it in your calculator. Okay. And here's a tip. If all these numbers are in millions, you don't need to type out all the zeros. You can leave the zeros off in the calculation, get an answer and add them on at the end. That'll save you time as well. Otherwise you're gonna be typing zeros for days. All right, so don't type all the zeros, just use these numbers here, get an answer and add your zeros at the end. All right, should take you about two or three minutes for that. These calculations are tedious, be careful of human error. There are 12 numbers you gotta account for in your calculation. Give you a couple of minutes to do that. We're working at the mean or the average of the income for rail. Mean monthly income for rail. Average monthly income for rail. Give you a couple of minutes. Let's see how you guys do. Yo, our team is very fast with their fingers there with a massive number 293. Hmm. My team, I think they have one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, no, hold on. You got it. Okay, so that could be the summation of all the numbers. All right, we need to work out the mean. That could be the summation. If you add them all up. Takes a little while. Lots of button pressing involved with this. 
Okay, there we go. Aura's got a value. And then you already just need to add on your zeros to that. Okay. So there's answers coming through. You make sure that you do yours. Don't worry about what's coming through. You do yours and then we'll check all together at the end. Okay. All right, going getting some more values coming through. Very easy for human error to come in here. Very easy. All right, some more values coming through. Give you one more minute. Lots of button pressing involved here. Very interesting how we're getting different answers. All right, let's check it out. Okay, so we need to calculate the mean. We need to add up the sum of all those numbers and divide by how many numbers there are. So we're going to divide by 12 because there's 12 months. But we need to find out what the sum of all these numbers is. So I'm going to start doing that on my calculator. And I'm going to leave off the zeros for now. So I'm just going to say 238 plus 266 plus 254. 238 again, plus 233, plus 216, plus 247, plus 251, plus 269, plus 254, plus 198. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly go through my calculator and check 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So I've got my 12 numbers there. All right. So this gives 2939. Okay, so they want to see this big summation. So 2939 with six zeros because it's millions. And then we're going to divide that by 12. Okay, so now we need to divide by 12, divide this by 12. And we get 244, 2.44 comma i'm not gonna write the comma i'm gonna write nine one six 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 seven i'm running that last one off so i'm i'm putting in all the million spaces there uh in fact we don't need to round that off there's one two three four five six uh there we go so one two three four five six if you want to get this into millions you can times this by a million there we go so two so I need four sixes, nine, one, four sixes. So four sixes, I shouldn't be rounding that off there. Four sixes, comma, seven, zero. Comma, seven, zero. All right. So that's 244,916,666 and 70 cents. Remember, these are all rands. So that's income. All right. So I'm just going to put the rand symbol there. And I don't need to round it off. It is already rounded off. There we go. Well done. Okay. Yes. Now, so you guys are getting the right answer. Just remember that you need to show this in millions. So what I did, look what I did here. Uh, let's do it like this. Divide by 12. On my calculator, I'm dividing by 12. The big summation, divide by 12. Mm, no, something's not right there. there in fact we can start from here so there's my number without the million zeros i can get the million zeros by timesing this by a million to put my zeros on whoa it's a big number the calculator doesn't like it so now we're going to divide by 12. Oy, oy, oy. something not right let's go back up again there so two nine three nine times a million. Oh, no, 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 there's something else is wrong here. Something else is wrong here. Let's type it out rather. 2939, let's just type it out. 2939, 2939, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. There we go. And divide that by 12. There we go. All right. So to add on the zeros, you can just times by a million. Um, or write out the zeros like that, okay? And then we divide it by 12, and this is the number we're getting. Okay, so your 244,916 9, is right, but don't remember, just remember, you, this is a million, so you gotta move that decimal six places to the right, okay? Just be careful of that. 
All right, so that's the average income. Okay, let's take this one down and see what else we got here for you. All right, look at the next question. Calculate the median total land income. The median total land income. Now, guys, I'm sorry to say that we're going to have to rearrange these numbers because for median, we need to find the middle one. Oh gosh, all right, let's quickly do it. Okay, so I'm gonna move over here, the median total land income. So this is the land income column on the right-hand side here. We need the, the median. So we're first gonna quickly arrange these in, in order from smallest to biggest. So I'm gonna <clears throat> write it out and I'm not gonna write the zeros. I'm just gonna write the numbers the first three numbers. We know there are millions attached to this. Don't forget that, okay? Because we'll be writing zeros all day. So it's 981, and then I need 986. Then I need 999. Then I need 1003. Look how I'm crossing them off as I go to make sure that I don't count twice. Uh, 1006 is next. You guys can check for me, but 1006 is next. Then 115 uh, looks like it's next. 1015. And then 1020 looks like it's next. 1020. I'm going to go down to the bottom now. Then 1023. In fact, let me just go out wide. 1023, then I need 1036, 1036, I'm going to make this smaller to fit it all in. Let's make this smaller, 1036, then I've got 1036, then I need 1040, then I need one triple one and then i finally need one oh one two three yo can you imagine writing this out in a matric exam this is from the 2019 paper i think although that last number doesn't look right one one two three yeah that doesn't look right one one two three one one two, three. All right, there we go. We've got 12 numbers. Where is the median? Median, what is another word for median, anybody? What is another word for median? If mean means average, what does median mean? Middle central something yes in the middle the number in the middle all right now i've told you before if we have yes the middle number good job if we have an even data set like 12 numbers 10 numbers 8 numbers 6 numbers 20 numbers 16 even numbers then you're going to find two numbers in the middle all right if it's an odd data set 9 11 13 15 17 3 5 you're going to find one number in the middle. Okay, that's the number in the middle. So if there's 12 numbers, we're going to have six on either side, right? So all I need to do is count six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so these two numbers here are in the middle. Just check one. I can tick from the other side, one, two, three, four, five, six, yes. All right, and then what do we do with those two? What do we do with those two numbers if we know that they are the median? We need to add them up. Yes, add and divide by two, very good. So it's gonna be 1015 plus 1020 divided by two. All right, let's do that quickly. So 1015 plus 1020. Will it? No, it won't. Let's just do the fraction like this. 1015 plus 1020. Wait, 
and then just divide by two. There we go. 10175. 10, now the decimal was here. All right. I need to add zeros. Okay. So 1017, if the decimal's there, I've got to have six numbers to the right. So one, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. So this decimal needs to be moved six to the right to sit over there. Okay. So there we go. We don't have any, uh, well, let's just write the two decimal places anyway. All right. So the decimal needs to move. If you have, if you chopped off the zeros and you get your answer looking like this, all right, the decimal needs to move six to the right. Okay. So I've put in a whole lot of numbers and move my decimals six to the right. One, five, two, five. Guys. One, five, two, five. I'm missing something. Where did 1525 come from? Eesh, guys, I'm confused now. 1525. Where is 1525 coming from? Hmm, I don't know. You're confusing me with that number. Let me know where the 1525 comes from. 1017. Yes, 1017 comma 5. That's it. All right. Okay, so that's how we do the median. You need to write the numbers uh, in. In fact, what you could do is you could say 1017,5 million. You could write it like that. That would also give you marks, okay? So you could also do it that way. If you're worried about where the decimal goes, you could write it out like that. Okay, so that is the median. You put the numbers in ascending or descending order. If it's an even data set, you find two numbers in the middle. If it's an odd data set, you find one number in the middle. Please remember that. Even numbers, two numbers in the middle. Odd numbers in the data set, one number in the middle. Please don't forget that. Okay, yes, well done. I'm not going to copy and paste all this down to the bottom. We understand how to do this. All right, I'm just going to do this over here. All right. I'll bring this down and let's have a look at the next question. All right, there we go. Now, oh, what's this? A probability question. Yes, you know why? Because they inject probability into all the other topics. Okay, you hardly find ever a, a, a probability question on its own. They will inject probability into all the other topics. So yes, I've got one here for you tonight because you've get, got to get used to it. These things pop up in all kinds of different topics in the exams. Write down the probability as a decimal of randomly selecting a month when the rail income for passenger transport was less than 200,000. Sure, there's a mouthful here. Okay, I'm going to take this whole question and I'm going to bring it up. Okay, we need to read this in conjunction with the table that we have. So I'll pop it here on the side and I'll delete all this. Stuff over here, it took me forever to do. All right, there's the question there. Write down the probability as a decimal of randomly selecting a month when the rail income for passenger transport was less than 200. So we gotta go find out where do we see this? Where do we see rail income less than 200? First of all, how many are there of those? Where's rail income less than 200? So here's rail over here. Here's the income. Where is it less than 200? Okay. Huh. Only one place. And they said 200,000 or 200 million. Let's read the question again. 200 million. All right. So where is the rail income for passenger transport? Is it cost? Let's check. 200, 200 million rand. Yes. What's the probability as a decimal of randomly selecting a month when the rail income for passenger transport was less than 200? All right, so we see this happening once down here at the bottom. Out of how many? One out of how many? One out of how many? How many times do we see this? One possibility out of, out of how many possibilities are there? 12, absolutely. There are 12 possibilities to see rail income. Only once do we see it below 200 million. So it's one 
out of a possible 12. Once that we see it, that we observe it out of a possible 12. So it's one over 12. Now we are not done because the question says we've got to show this as a decimal. So we'll go to our calculator and tell the calculator, I paid good money for you. You tell me. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0,083333333. And we'll round that off to 0, 0, 0, 0,08. We'll show two decimals because the instruction always says two. Don't worry, Somalese. I'm busy experiencing load shedding. It's a miracle I'm even talking to you at the moment. These things happen, but we try our best. That's all we can do is try our best. Okay. Try our best with what we have. Yes, we are happy that you are here. All right. So it's one that we observed out of a possible 12, and we need to show it as a decimal. We got it done. All right. There we go. There's our answer there. Guys, remember, please, if you have any questions, feel free to speak. Okay, now, what I'm going to do, I've got another um, table of data here, but I want to move on to the last question. Don't, don't stress. I know what you're thinking. The last one's always the worst. No, this isn't bad, but I want to do this with the matrix because they will or should get a question with one of these bad boys in. All right. So we can see here that this is a box and whisker plot. We'll come back and do the other questions, but let's finish this one first. This is a box and whisker plot. Okay. For those that haven't seen one before, you should see one eventually. So it's good that you uh, are introduced to it tonight. So it says, yeah, the candidates sat for the National Senior Certificate, which you matrix are going to be doing soon, for the exams in November 2018. The box and whisker plot below shows the five number summary, and I'll talk about the five number summary, of the average pass percentages for math literacy. So this is the summary for the marks for math literacy. All right, now I need someone to come online and tell me, what is the five number summary? Anybody? Somebody. Somebody? Yay, we have Cabo. Please check your screen for a message. There we go. Hi, sir. Hey, how are you? I'm good, me. Good, thanks. What is the uh, five number summary? It's made up of the median, the upper quartile, low quartile, um, and minimum and maximum. Very good. So right on the left, we have the minimum. Right on the right, we have the maximum. The median is the middle line in this box. So that I'll say median over here. Lower quartile, I'll say LQ is the end, the left end of the box. And upper quartile, I'll say UQ is the right hand side of the box. You happy with that? Yes. All right, cool. Thanks, Kabul. Thank you very much. All right, now you guys can put in chat, those of you that know these uh, box and whisker plots in the five number summary, what is another name for the lower quartile and the upper quartile? They give them symbols. Lower quartile and upper quartile, what are the symbols for lower quartile and upper quartile? You can put them in chat. Yes, Charles, well done. You know it, you got it. Okay, good. You got them all there. Tunnel Q4 is the one at the end. It is, there is a Q4. In fact, there isn't a Q4. Well, Q4 is at the end of the data, but Q1, Q2, Q3. All right, so in this box here, uh, we've got Q1 is the lower quartile. The median is always Q2, and the upper quartile is always Q3. All right, so they use different names for them. You need to know all the names because they might refer to them in the exam, but they usually use the words upper quartile or lower quartile. But if you see the symbols, you know what they are. All right. So we've got minimum, lower quartile, median, upper quartile, max. Okay. Um, let's see. Blah, 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 blah. All right. Let's see. Let's see what the first question is. It says here, write down the pass percentage that represents the following. The median. Write down the percentage that represents 
the median for two marks. Just write it down. Don't calculate. Write it down. The median. Just write it down. There we go. All right. So it's 69%. Now, you get two free marks if you understand what a box and whisker plot is and you understand where the median is. It's free marks. Money in the bank. Okay. Then they say write down the pass percentage that represents the following. Quartile three. You see, now this is why I say you got to know all the names. Quartile three, write it down. Yes, you got it. Money in the bank. Okay, now I wrote down all the names here. You can see them easily. In the exam, you have to know that this off by heart, all right? So you have to know what a box and whisker plot is and you know what all the lines are in the box and whisker plot. But yes, Q3 is over here. So it is 80%. All right, four free marks if you know what a box, box and whisker plot is and you know the five number summary. That's easy money, guys. That's easy money. All right, let's see what else I've got for you here. Determine the difference between the highest and lowest pass percentage. Determine the difference between the highest and the lowest pass percentage. Easy peasy, guys. Come on. There's another way that could have um, asked this question. Determine the difference between the highest and the lowest pass percent. Yes, Charles. That's exactly it. I'm going to write it up here first. It's 84%, which is the highest, minus 64%, which is the lowest. And that should give us, the answer should be there really, guys. Yes, you know, 20%. What's another name for this calculation? What is another name for this calculation you guys have got the answers right well done yes well done good job it's the range so they could have asked the question calculate the range of the marks and you do the same calculation the exact same calculation good job well done all right so even though this topic might seem strange to you if you understand it uh, it actually is very easy. There's a lot of free marks here, a lot of good marks here. Oh, what's this next question? Determine the interquartile range. Determine the interquartile range. Determine the interquartile range. Another an abbreviation is the IQR. They sometimes say IQR. Determine the interquartile range. Yes, Charles, it is Q1, sorry, Q3 minus Q1. Absolutely, nice and easy. Yes, all right, what is Q3? It's 80. What is Q1? It's 66. And this gives us 14. <clears throat> oh, guys, this is not that difficult. So if you know box and whisker plots, you can get all these marks quite easily. All right. So the interquartile range is exactly what it sounds like. It's the range between the quartiles. Where are the quartiles? We've got Q1 here on the left. We've got Q3 here on the right. I need the range between them. So it's the biggest one minus the smallest one, 80 minus 66, and it equals 14. Nice and easy. All right. We hope we get questions like this in the exam because they're actually not too bad. All right. So that is the uh, box and whisker plot question that I wanted to show you guys. Got a whole lot of nice marks there. Let's go back up to another data set. Are there any questions, please? Remember, speak now, don't ever hold your peace. All right, here we go. Back to some data. All right, going from some all right, there's a question, I think. All 
All right, Dinengo, just check your screen there. You should see a little icon to unmute. I'm starting to think it might be. There we go. Oh, there we go. Uh, hi, sir. Hi, how are you? How are you doing, sir? I'm good, and you? Good, thanks, yourself. Good. What's up? What can I help you with? Uh, so I was hoping if you could please re-explain um, question two again. So I was oh, hoping if you could please just give me a. Can you, I was hoping if you could please just give me a brief summary of question two again, sir. When you say question two, is it the whole box and whisker question? Yes, sir. All right. I'll, I'll give you a brief summary. Do you understand a box and I'm whisker sorry, plot? sorry, sir. I just had to do That's something fine. real quick, it's, sir. No, it's fine. Do you understand a box and whisker plot? You know what a box and whisker plot is? Kind of. Uh, no, sir. Okay. So a box and whisker plot is five important points. All right. So you see the question here where they say the five number summary. This uh, yeah. plot comes from five uh, specific numbers uh, that you get from a data set, all right? You know how to work, you know how to find the minimum of a data set and you know how to find the maximum of a data set. Am I right? Yes, sir. Okay. You also should know how to find the median of any data set. You could do that, eh? Yes, sir. All right. <clears throat> The other two things you need to know is to find the lower quartile and the upper quartile of a data set. Do you know how to do that? Uh, so can I please ask, so what is the lower quartile and higher quartile? So the lower quartile and the, up, and the upper quartile, uh, if for example, oh geez, I deleted all my numbers now. Honestly, these are not in order. Oh, no, I deleted all my numbers. All right, let me give an example. Okay, so I'll go down here for an example. Mm. So let's say we create a data set, which is 2, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15, 20, 25, and 26. Okay, so there's my data set. Yes, and I'm, first of all, we know the minimum is two. All right, so we've got to first we've got to we've got to first get the minimum and then the maximum. All right, the minimum is two, we know that. The maximum is 26, we know that. Now the median is the middle. So we would find the median. We first see how many numbers do we have? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine numbers. It's an odd data set. The median so we 13, know it's sir. in the middle, it's 13. All right, you're on the money. Okay, so the median's 13. Now the lower quartile, you ask yourself this, how many numbers to the left of the median? How many numbers are there to the left of the median? You should see there are four there. That's, and you're gonna treat that as, there's four, there's 11, nine, seven, and two. All right, so four. we've got four numbers, Four numbers that are to the left of oh. the median. Okay. So oh. what we're going to do, yes. So we're going to do is say, um, what is the median of that? The middle of that. If there are four numbers, then these two must be in the middle. And we obviously have to add them up and divide by two. And that should give us eight. So the middle of the bottom half of the data set is eight. So I'll put you a lower quartile. The lower quarter number is eight. We do the same on the top half. We say, how many numbers are there to the right of the median? There are again four numbers there. And we know that the middle of the four numbers there's is four. Yes, there's four. There's four to the right of. Is 20 again. and 25. Yeah. So we're going to say 20 plus 25 and then divide by two. And that should give us 22,5. All right. Upper quartile, mm. yeah, it's 45 divided by two, which is 22,5. So our upper quartile is 22,5. So that is the five number summary. And then what they'll do, and you never have to draw one. You just have to know what they are because they will draw one for you. So it might look something like this. I'll quickly draw one. 
okay it won't be to scale because i'm just sketching it here for you so we are just going to draw a basic one like that and then like that and then we'll put the median somewhere over there so they'll draw a box with whiskers on it and the minimum has to go here the mm. lower quartile goes here the median goes in there in the middle of the box the upper quartile goes there and the maximum goes there. So it's a, a graphical way to represent the five number summary. And there will always be oh. a there'll, there'll be a ruler at the bottom here, and there'll be marks on this ruler all the way. I'm not going to draw in all the marks. And the the lines in the five number summary, these lines here that I'm highlighting in yellow will match the numbers on the ruler for the five number summary. So underneath the minimum line, you should see a two. Lower quartile should be eight, median should be 13, upper quartile should be 22,5, and the maximum should be, excuse me, 26. So on the ruler, those lines will match those numbers. Okay. Yes, sir. So, so if we come back. No, thank you, sir. All right, pleasure. If we come back to the question there, they've taken a five number summary and they've plotted it using this box and whisker plot on this ruler, and then they're going to ask you a whole lot of questions on it. Yes, sir. All right. Awesome. No, I understand it, sir. Thank you, sir. Pleasure. Pleasure. Thanks for the question. All right. We're going to quickly go up to the data set here and see if I can't pull out one or two interesting questions for you. All right. We're not going to do the um, the um, the difficult ones. All right. We're going to, well, the easy ones, actually. Determine the range. We know how to do range. Determine the missing value A. Let's have a look. Determine the missing value A. Let's see. Uh, okay, here we go. Let's do this one. How do we determine the missing value A? So these are scores for gymnasts. All right. You get a vault event, a bars event, a beam event, a floor event, and then you add up all the scores for a total. So if we are looking here at this event here, all right, they want us to work out what is the missing value A. Just remember that this number at the end here, 36,425, is the total so how can we find the missing value a does anyone want to come online quickly and tell me how we can do this anybody somebody out there help me with this question wow not a single soul <laughs> <laughs> it's crickets like you say it's crickets yeah, no. Uh, very good. Yes. Good job. Yes, you can do it like that. You can minus all the numbers. All right. Excellent. Yeah, you can use the chat guide. Don't have to come live if you're shy. You know, if you're shy and you've got your mouth full of popcorn or something, it's fine. Just type it in chat. You guys probably type faster than, than talking. I'm very slow with typing, especially on my phone. All right. So 36,425 minus all these numbers. 9 comma 3, I'm not going to write the zeros, 9 comma 1 plus 9 comma 225. We need to minus those three numbers there. All right, let's do it in the calculator. So 36 comma 425 minus, I'll use brackets, don't have to, but I like to, you know what I'm like. All right, so 9.1 plus 9.225. There we go, put them in a the bracket there. And you should all get eight comma eight. All right, eight comma eight or eight comma zero zero. We should only only really show two decimal places, although I'm trying to copy what they've done there on the on the table. All right, so you take the total, you minus all the rest, and you get eight comma eight. It's easy, guys. The stats section is actually a a nice section in the exam. There's two parts: is the calculations. And then there's the graphs. The graphs can sometimes be tricky, but the calculations aren't bad. Measurement and finance, much worse than this. Much worse than this. Hey, okay? Even if they throw in probability, come on, what is that? We can do it. All right. If there's no questions, I want to pick out one more. Let's see if we can do one more. Oh, I like this one. Write down the modal score for the total points score. Now, what on earth is modal, ladies and gentlemen? What is that? Modal. 
Mode. Yes. Jeez, I thought I got you. All right. Mode. Modal means mode. The most. Write down the score that occurred the most for the total points scored. All right. Let's go up here. We're looking at the total points scored column. All right. Which is this column on the right hand side. Which one is the modal value? Or which one occurred the most? Have a look. You've got to scan through the numbers. It's the most frequent one, absolutely. Which one is the most frequent one? Yes, the most, the one that occurs the most. Which number in, the, in this column you highlighted in red with a red box around it, which number occurs the most? 36, yes, but we have to look at the whole number, not just the front two, hey? The whole thing, 36, 4, 2, 5. Yes, I would say 36, 4, 2, 5. There's two of them. All right, there's two of them. Now I'm looking at and checking, making sure we don't have anything else. You got to check, got to check. No, those are the only two that repeat. Yes, so 36, 4, 2, 5. All right. 36,425 is the modal number. Well done, ladies and gentlemen. So as you can see with data handling, it's an easy section, well, easier than the other sections, depending on who you are. And we can get a lot of good marks here. Just read the questions carefully. Be careful when you're working with data to be careful of human error. That's where human error can keep cre uh, creeping when you're typing in all the numbers. Be careful of that. All right.